What's up everyone, my name is Nick Moe, and I'm finally back to take part in one of my favorite pastimes. That's right, I'm replaying a bunch of classic games and ranking them from worst to best through my highly scientific process. And this time I'm taking on one of my all-time favorite series of games, Donkey Kong Country. Here's how it works. I will be playing through all five original Donkey Kong Country games, starting with the Super Nintendo original and ending with Tropical Freeze. And I will be judging them on how well they play right now, in 2018. I will also be playing these games as they were originally designed, which means no save states in the Super Nintendo games. And as for the new games, I will be playing on the normal difficulty with DK. Sorry Funky, but this is a highly scientific process and you're just too damn cool for us. Finally, let's make one thing clear. None of these games are actually bad. In my opinion, every game in the Donkey Kong Country series is worth playing. Unfortunately, when you rank games, something has to come in last place and that's the toughest part of the job. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get down to business. This is Kong Rank. In at number 5 is Donkey Kong Country 3. I know it seems unfair. Donkey Kong Country 3 is probably the most skipped game in the series. In fact, there are probably a decent number of Nintendo fans out there who are unaware that they even made a third Super Nintendo Donkey Kong Country game. But here's the thing. It's actually a great game. Donkey Kong Country 3 came at the very end of the Super Nintendo era, and because of this, the developers were able to push the hardware in ways that they weren't in the first two Donkey Kong Country games. For starters, there's a new overworld where you can freely move around from a top-down perspective. Sure, it's simple, but the world feels much more alive than previous Donkey Kong Country games. DKC3 is also where the developers really began to push 3D concepts, incorporating 3D elements into the mini-games, into the boss fights, and giving the levels a real sense of depth. And while Donkey Kong Country 3 is a technical wonder of the 16-bit era, it feels a bit empty when you go back and play it today. The game is set in the Northern Cremosphere, I think? which is just a bland countryside that lacks any sense of identity. Most of the overworld looks the same from beginning to end, and the sameness continues to the levels themselves. Many of the later levels reuse assets from previous stages and just tweak the color palette. Now, a lot of games do this, but it's very noticeable in Donkey Kong Country 3. However, I think this game's biggest downside is in its music selection. In general, Donkey Kong Country games are known for their music. Some Donkey Kong Country songs are among the most recognized songs in video games, and yet DKC3's soundtrack is a total disappointment. Donkey Kong Country 3 has this bluegrass country vibe that covers most of the game's soundtrack, and it really robs the game of any memorable songs. Okay, with one key exception, see if you recognize this song here. Yeah, that's a Super Nintendo arrangement of Peach's Castle from Mario 64. This little tribute to Mario 64 is a perfect analogy for Donkey Kong Country 3. It's a solid platformer that was overlooked for bigger and better games at the time, and when you come back to Donkey Kong Country 3 today, it's still a solid game, but you can't help but notice it's been overshadowed by other games in the franchise. Coming in at number 4 is the original Donkey Kong Country. It may seem wrong to put the game that kicked off the whole franchise towards the bottom of the list, but I have my reasons. Despite being the oldest title on this list, the original Donkey Kong Country has actually aged really well. The level designs still hold up after all these years, and as you play through the game, the difficulty still presents a challenge, but never feels cheap or unfair. And unlike Donkey Kong Country 3's bland countryside, the original Donkey Kong Country takes you on a tour of DK Island, and each section introduces new gameplay concepts and challenges. And of course, the soundtrack is one of the best of the era, introducing classic songs like Jungle Groove. and chilled out vibes like aquatic ambience.
So why does the original come in so low on my list? Here's the thing, the original Donkey Kong Country has some truly interesting and challenging levels that many players have never seen, and it's because of an unfortunate save system. In Donkey Kong Country, the ability to save your game is limited. In many cases, you will need to complete not one, but two or three challenging levels in a row without running out of lives to reach a save point. Say you can breeze through level one and two just fine, but level three is a real challenge and you're stuck. If you run out of lives, you'll have to replay these levels over and over again just to reach the level that you're actually stuck on. I know it seems unfair to judge an old game by its save system, but I am ranking these games in a modern context in 2018. And so, the original Donkey Kong Country stays at number four on my countdown. Coming in at number three is Donkey Kong Country Returns, the first title on this list from the modern era. And while the first two games on my list were developed in the 90s by Rare, Donkey Kong Country Returns marked the return of the Country series on the Wii and was developed by Retro Studios. For the most part, Returns takes cues from the original games and improves upon them. Donkey Kong and his friends still have a real sense of weight and momentum to how they move. And Retro added a few new moves to DK's arsenal, such as the Ground Pound. Of course, the jump to a full 3D engine brought visual improvements, and Returns has some of the most memorable levels in the entire series. Take a look at Sunset Shore, with its striking visual style. Or take Tidal Terror, where Donkey Kong must traverse the level while avoiding deadly storm surges. The game is just filled with interesting ideas. Even better, the save system has been completely modernized, allowing for saving after each level, which keeps the game moving. In fact, the only bad thing I can say about the levels in Returns is that they're a bit on the easy side compared to older Donkey Kong Country games. The problem with making the levels too easy is it makes replaying the game less enjoyable. Speaking of bad things, we need to talk about controls. When Returns first released on the Wii, it came with a waggle requirement. Shaking the Wiimote was required for DK's basic moves and attacks. While I personally never had an issue with shaking the Wiimote, the fact that it could not be disabled is a bummer, both for players with disabilities who can't shake a Wiimote, and for regular players who just don't like motion controls. Eventually, a 3DS port would be released with more traditional controls, but to be fair to the other titles on this list, I can't just pick and choose features from different ports. This is a ranking of the core titles in the Donkey Kong Country series, and the Wii version of Returns is a great game, but it's limited both by its control scheme and a rather forgiving difficulty curve. Coming in at second place on my rank is the latest game in the series, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. This was a difficult choice, but I promise it'll make sense in the end. Tropical Freeze is not only one of the best Donkey Kong games, it is one of the best platformers I've ever played. After bringing DK back with Returns, Retro Studios set out to push the series forward, and they knocked it out of the park. Tropical Freeze features some of the most unique levels I've ever played. In fact, the levels are so different from one another, it almost feels as if you're playing through multiple games in one. Don't believe me? Take a look at Cliffside Slide, where we see DK climb through an avalanche. And then take a look at Reckless Ride, where DK soars at explosive speeds. And then compare those two levels with Grassland Groove, which is this glorious tour of an African savanna. The variety continues with the game's characters. Like Returns, Diddy Kong is here to ride on DK's back to give him a better jump, but Tropical Freeze expands upon this concept, adding Dixie Kong and her hair helicopter to give Donkey Kong a double jump, as well as Cranky Kong and his cane, which allows DK to bounce on dangerous spikes and other hazards, like Scrooge McDuck in DuckTales. To put it simply, Tropical Freeze is a triumph of game design. The level layouts are excellent, there are different characters creating multiple ways to play each level. Gorgeous artwork is paired with a memorable soundtrack. There is a challenging but fair difficulty curve. Oh, and no more waggle, as both the Switch and Wii U versions of Tropical Freeze are playable with traditional controls. So why is Tropical Freeze number two? To understand, I think I need to introduce you guys to the number one game in this ranking. It actually shares a lot in common with Tropical Freeze. Donkey Kong Country 2 is the best game in the Donkey Kong Country series and comes in at number one on my rank. It may not be as technically impressive as Donkey Kong Country 3, and it may not have all the luxuries of modern game development like Tropical Freeze. 
but Donkey Kong Country 2 is the best overall experience front to back of any game in the series and I'm about to show you why. First, you need to know that Donkey Kong Country 2 has the most interesting setting in the entire series. Every other game in the Donkey Kong Country series is set on DK Island or somewhere similar. And these games seem to repeat the same level themes over and over. You have a jungle, maybe a beach, or an ice world, and a volcano. DKC2 throws all of that out the window. Diddy and Dixie are on a quest to save Donkey Kong, and to do so they must venture into enemy territory, Crocodile Isle. It's a dark and scary place, and this change of scenery gives the developers the freedom to get weird. You start on a pirate ship, stroll through the inside of a beehive, ride through an evil amusement park, and climb a treacherous medieval castle. These wild new environments give DKC2 a darker and more memorable atmosphere, and it still feels unique all these years later. Supporting these incredible levels is one of the greatest soundtracks in the history of video games. The game is filled with classic songs, but I am legally required to stop right here and remind everyone of how good Sticker Brush Symphony is. Set in one of the most challenging levels in the game, Sticker Brush Symphony is an atmospheric mellow groove. It almost feels out of place in this stressful level, but somehow it makes the game even more immersive. It's almost as if the composer, David Wise, knew that players would need to focus to beat this level, and the music eases us into a zen state where we can focus on the incredible challenge of the level. Speaking of challenge, DKC2 is the gold standard when it comes to difficulty in platforming games. The game also features not one, but two endings. Reaching the first ending requires skill, but the second ending is a real challenge. This concept of having more than one ending for both casual and dedicated players has become a key part of Nintendo's games, most recently with Mario Odyssey, which has so many endings I created a whole video about it. I could probably go on and on about Donkey Kong Country 2 for 30 more minutes, but to spare you, I will sum it up like this. Every Donkey Kong Country game does one thing better than the rest. Donkey Kong Country 3 has the most interesting boss fights. Donkey Kong Country 1 feels grounded and natural. Donkey Kong Country Returns has an incredible sense of style. Tropical Freeze is the king of variety and level design, but Donkey Kong Country 2 is the perfect blend of all of these traits. It is the single strongest game in the series, and if I had to recommend only one Donkey Kong Country game to someone who has never played any of them, it would have to be Donkey Kong Country 2. And that's Kong Rank, but we're not done here. Though highly scientific, this list is mine alone, and I want to see your lists in the comments below. Maybe you think Tropical Freeze deserves that number one spot, or maybe you think Donkey Kong Country 3 really ain't all that bad. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the first episode in this series on Sonic the Hedgehog. And if you have a series that you want me to rank, let me know about it. Thanks for watching and waiting patiently for my return to YouTube. My name is Nick Moe, and I will catch you all in the next video.